there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. He was the boy from a working class background who made it his life's mission to entertain and heal the world at the same time. With a soaring voice and moves that belied his age, the youngest member of the Jackson 5 soon became the one to watch. And the world never stopped watching Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson changed my life when I saw him moonwalk, when I heard him sing, when I seen him perform. Um, He's, he was life changing. He's the greatest artist of our time. You know, period point blank. Inspiration for you? And yeah, yeah, that, 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 definitely inspiration for myself and all artists, all artists, all, all recording artists. Yeah, I, I don't think there's nobody that, that, that could actually see a Michael Jackson and not say their life hasn't been changed or they haven't been inspired. In the headquarters of culture, in the temple of black entertainment. On the stage that produced the Sarah Vaughns and the Ella Fitzgerald and the Jackie Wilsons and the James Brown. On this stage, we want to send a message around the world that you can write what you want and say what you want. Michael Jackson was ours and we are Michael Jackson and we love Michael Jackson. Creating music that became the soundtrack to people's lives the world over, the sheer impact of Michael Jackson on generations of people cannot be underestimated. I grew up with Michael Jackson. I was a little girl only eight years old. My mother, my family have his record, you know, little kid, I was thinking about his song. But it was also Michael's magical moves that beguiled audiences. One particular signature step would change the face of dance forever. Uh, I called Michael up and I said, Michael, I know you and you know me. And, you know, this television show is not a television show. This is Motown 25. And he said, I'll be there. And he came there. And then he did the moonwalk. Mm, 어 그리고 어 모든 이 댄스 가수들의 어 아마 교과서가 되지 않을까라는 생각이 아 듭니다. 그래서 음아 일단 고인의 명복을 굉장히 아 빌고 있습니다. But this was just a walk in the park for Mr. Michael Jackson, who, let's face it, had a whole life of career defining moments. With an estimated 800 million Michael Jackson albums finding their way into people's homes around the world, the King of Pop had made an indelible mark on history. And with his untimely passing in 2009, the impact of his ability to touch people through music was brought into full light. A few hours after the devastating news of his death, Devoted fans just couldn't get enough of the man whose music they'd grown up with. Uh, in the three days after his death, he sold about uh, 2.6 million tracks in total. Uh, the week before he died, he sold about 10,000 copies of his albums, all told. Uh, the three days following his death, he sold about uh, 420,000 copies of his albums, all told. So, you know, the interest that you're, you're seeing in this is really uh, substantial. It was people power at its finest. The fans were voting with their wallets and telling the world where they thought Michael Jackson should be and should always be back on top of the U.S. music charts at number one. And that's exactly where three of his albums would land. Essential Michael Jackson number ones, and Thriller sitting proudly in the top three spots. What's actually even more amazing than that to me is that three of those albums have outsold the number one selling album on the contemporary albums chart. And that's never happened in the history of Billboard. We're a 115-year-old brand, so that's saying something. Uh, Michael Jackson has three different titles that uh, in basically three days 
which was the amount of time he had after he died but before the chart week ended. In basically three days, he had three different albums sell more than 100,000 copies. In the meantime, his supporters clung in hope to the swirling rumors that Michael had in fact left a treasure trove of unreleased music for his fans to cherish after his passing. In particular, there were known to be unheard tracks from studio sessions of his more famous albums, which had never seen the light of day. Not to mention more recently recorded songs with artists such as Akon and Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas. Tommy Mottola, the former chairman and CEO of Sony Music, which owns the distribution rights to Michael's music, described the unreleased material as endless. He went on to say that new and repackaged Michael Jackson releases could go on for years and years, even more than Elvis. If there are, uh, you know, a volume of unreleased Jackson songs, and it seems pretty clear that there are at this point, um, they would absolutely be successful. I think the, the real question is how successful they'd be, right? So uh, if these songs are not that great and they're just going to appeal to diehard fans and uh, sort of uh, people who are wanting to complete their Jackson co collections at all times, uh, you know, then you're looking at something that might sell a million copies, you know, maybe two million copies. But if he puts out this album and... Uh, it's actually good if the estate puts out this album and there's actually songs on there that maybe especially if they touch the emotions that people are feeling right now if there's a, a poignant ballad on there and he's certainly done that in the past successfully uh, I mean I just think it would it would be a blockbuster as the days went by after Michael's death the faithful were demanding more and more of the king of pop and were simply not ready to let go of this iconic figure who had made such an impact on their lives I think it should something, something's got to happen where fans can go to. I think there's so many, he's got young followings. Even I'm a bit young to be such a huge Michael fan, but he's got younger kids that still that have no idea that remember him as white Michael and, you know, completely different to how I do or maybe my sister sees it. Thankfully, behind the scenes, plans were afoot to give the people what they were asking for and fans didn't have to wait long for the first posthumous single, This Is It. Delivered under strict security, eager fans hit the streets of London, happy to forego sleep to get their hands on the new CD. Basically, I've been a fan for about 20 years now. I've always been to the hotels to support him. Um, I've had the chance to meet him a couple of times. And um, this is the first ever premiere of the new song. All around the world, they're going to sh like show it for the first time. And I thought, I want to be part of history and be here. I'm just really excited to be one of the first people to hear it. I got motivated a lot more by listening to the 40 second clip of This Is It. Because um, it's a bit sad to listen to it, but you know, he, he sounds happy. It's good to uh, hear that, and that's kind of nice to hear that. Um, Michael is, a, you know, what he symbolises to me is uh, um, love for humanity, really. Uh, he's a great humanitarian and a great musician. Based on the phenomenal ticket sales for Michael's This Is It series of concerts, it was clear that the public had never wavered in support of their pop hero. And even though it could sometimes be years between album releases, whenever Michael hit the stage, his fans proved they would always be there, right by his side. And so the masterminds behind the This Is It tour agreed that they couldn't let Michael's fans down, just as they had never let him down, and a plan was hatched in the form of a brand new This Is It movie. We have a hundred hours of the most intimate HD footage of every audition, every rehearsal, every, every everything. Okay, Michael really let the cameras come in. He felt comfortable. We were all family. In a way, he's not always that comfortable, public. So we have that in HD. We have almost a, a pretty much a full performance, you know, um, dress rehearsal. Um, and we have enough material for two live albums, which he's never put out. Um, so we have all that, all that material. Yes, This Is It was being given a new lease on life. And after hours of painstakingly assembling rehearsal footage, fans around the globe turned out for the premiere of the movie that captured the last days of Michael Jackson in all his talented glory. So I think Michael will be very, very pleased to know that they're seeing what he had ready. A film like This Is It had never been released in cinemas before. So after it earned $20.1 million at the worldwide box office on its first day, 
many industry insiders were wondering what to make of the figures. Is that a good number or is that a bad number? Well, I think it's a very good number. Where it fits in the overall scheme of things is hard because there is no real comparison to this movie. You know, its star is dead. He can't go out and promote the film. It's sort of part documentary, part uh, a concert film. Nobody's really seen one of those. So it's hard to come by comparisons. But I think any way you slice and dice the numbers comes out good for Sony. Plans were already being drawn up for the DVD release of This Is It, with Michael's people knowing full well that no self-discerning Jackson fan would pass up the opportunity to own never-seen-before footage of the great man himself in full flight. What you do, are going to get in the bonus material with the DVD is, you know, a number of really, you know, jam-packed hours of m more behind the scenes, more interviews, more of Michael, and um, but but I, I mean I think we tell the story here, and I think that that was that was the uh, that was the idea to tell the story here. We may though later have an opportunity to uh, explore sharing the three D aspects of what we were going to do um, once technology catches you know catches up a little further. But for the diehard fans, a film was not enough to commemorate their hero's sudden passing. As renewed feelings of love for Michael swept the world it became clear that there was only one way to show thanks for all the music and good times, with one massive global thriller dance. The reason I'm dancing, uh, I'm doing everything just for him, just out here having a great time, ready to break the world record. Because we're having a Halloween party this weekend, and we're going to do the thriller dance, and he said we should go here and learn it, and I'm like, we should just go here and do it. So. Yeah, we love it. We grew up with it. I mean, we've been watching. I've been watching it for 20 years, so it's been going on for a while. We love it. Everyone comes down, wants to dance, have fun. Yes, it was a frightful scene in Los Angeles as more than 4,000 fully made up dancers gathered to remember Michael Jackson by dancing to his iconic song, Thriller. But it wasn't only in America the fans were getting down and dirty and decidedly spooky. Fans also turned up to pay their respects across 37 countries worldwide. All told, an estimated 20,000 people were believed to have set a record for the largest simultaneous thriller dance routine. And with professional dancers on site to give new thrillers a helping hand, the scene was set for some massive monster moves. Volunteer came out to learn the dance, to help other people learn the dance, and just celebrate Michael. Meanwhile, in Mexico City, hundreds more zombie-clad fans were also gathering to pay their respects to the King of Pop ahead of the attempt to set a new Guinness World Record. A group of 50 people gathered in front of the Fine Arts Palace to rehearse the dance, with the Facebook launched initiative set to break yet another record for the largest group of people dancing to Thriller in one place. This is an initiative that lleva five semanas que se hizo a través de la red social Facebook que eh, al momento de hoy había registrado más de 11,000 participantes eh, para este evento que eh, la mayor parte es de, de la Ciudad de México pero hay de todo el país y de otros lados del mundo que ya en este momento se ha pagado a Record Guinness una cantidad para que garanticen que se ha registrado el día 29 de agosto a las 6 de la tarde en el Monumento de la Revolución. Curious onlookers watched as they repeated the choreography over and over again with organizers expecting 11,000 people at the record attempt to be held at Mexico City's Revolution Monument. For those who could not make the rehearsals, the organizers had uploaded videos on Facebook with instructions on how to follow the thrilling dance steps. And leading the charge was 23-year-old Hector Lopez, who'd been impersonating Michael Jackson for over eight years and had even had plastic surgery to look more like him. 
que más que nada es el homenaje al rey del pop, más que romper el récord Guinness. Eh, muchos van con la idea de ir a hacer eh, montón, de ir a hacer este récord Guinness, pero muchos vamos con la idea de hacer el homenaje al rey del pop. Ironically, the majority of those taking part in the Thriller tributes were teenagers who weren't even born at the peak of Michael Jackson's popularity. However, they knew a legend when they heard one, and this was one opportunity they weren't going to pass up. Claro, lo más impresionante es que después de su muerte, los chiquitos que ni siquiera lo conocían ahora bailan como él, se visten como él, y es como si hubiera vuelto a nacer. And Michael's Peruvian fans would no doubt agree, even taking their talents to a local cemetery to ensure that even though their tribute didn't have the scale of the Los Angeles event, it definitely had the heart. And leading the tribute was a local celebrity known as the Michael Jackson of Callao. Yo soy una persona muy idónea de Michael Jackson. Me puse mal cuando él, él falleció. Y yo he limitado desde los tres años. Entonces yo quise darle esta puesta en escena ya que era lo que creo que mejor me podría salir. In London, it was a different story. With its West End, a thriving industry for theater and musical performers, open auditions were being held for the Thrill Alive extravaganza to take the musical on a world tour. The call went out for dancers who can moonwalk and body pop, and the response was a thrill in itself, with budding Jackson wannabes lining the block for their chance to participate in the once-in-a-lifetime tribute. Well, like, since Michael Jackson died, I've just been feeling, like, down, like, it's just been, like, my way to, like, pay respect to him, like, to, like, be in his concert, like, be a part of his life, like. But when it comes to doing celebrations with a bit of class and panache, no one can beat the French. And on what would have been Michael Jackson's 51st birthday, hundreds of his fans staged a flash moonwalk at the Trocadero, with the magnificent Eiffel Tower in the background. And after a minute silence, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Surtout un hommage et on veut montrer à tous les gens du monde entier qu'on l'aime et qu'on le soutient parce que ça restera sans aucun doute la plus grande star que le monde n'ait jamais connue. With some fans carrying posters and wearing distinctive Jackson outfits, it wasn't long before the dancing began with a medley of Jackson's hits including Billie Jean, Beat It and Bad. Je suis fan et je l'aime aussi. Tous les gens que vous voyez là, ils l'adorent, ils l'aiment. Et ce qui est différent entre les autres stars, c'est qu'ils ont talent, honte, et sa générosité. On l'aime parce qu'on l'aime et on l'aime parce qu'il a du talent. Et ce qui est on est tous là parce qu'on l'aime et qu'on veut dire merci. But as Jackson's 1987 hit, Man in the Mirror, was played, huddled groups of fans broke into tears. He's my inspiration for dance and for song. He's the, the greatest artist, corporate artist. And when I, when I, when I say when he died, uh, honestly, I cried, but uh, I lost a part of me, and uh, it's like uh, it's like to lost a, a friend, a brother. The birthday celebrations continued in London's Trafalgar Square, where hundreds of Michael Jackson clones danced their way through his hits, proving to everyone that the King of Pop's crown was still firmly in place. see the amount of people they support that has turned out today shows the world that Michael Jackson has still got a great force, great fans showing, you know, people still want to come out and dance in public in front of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that travel through London every day, they'll show the world that we all love Michael. In Taipei, hundreds of MJ fans in black and white fedora hats beat their groove thing in concert to the tune of Beat It, before launching into We Are The World, Heal The World, and What More Can I Give, with passionate supporters giving the day the thumbs up. Uh, 
非常震惊，因为 M J 是我唯一一个偶像，真正的偶像，因为。从我懂得舞台，开始热爱舞台，然后在舞蹈方面，其实我想 M J 是一个非常能够让我启发很大的一个一个一个歌手，一个巨星。我想他的舞台，他的才华是没有人能够代替的，前无古人，后无来者。不管结果如何，我们认为他对于我们这舞蹈跟音乐的贡献都是不能否定的。对对对，他们负呃负面新闻就是不会影响我们对他们的影响。对 ，Michael 对我们来说是对 number one。In Hong Kong, top U.S. Michael Jackson impersonator Carl O'Reilly was flown in to perform at one of Kowloon's most popular malls. And when you're talking fans, no one tops this one. Practicing Jackson's moves every day by watching his videos and then repeating the steps, step by step, in front of a mirror. I'm actually a second-generation fan, meaning that、uh, my mom and all my aunts and everyone in my family were Michael Jackson and Jackson Five fans. So I grew up around all that music、uh, in my household, and、uh, I can plan on doing that with the rest of my、uh, family when I have a son. First、uh, son will be named Michael. And I'll definitely train him to be the best Michael out there. Not to be outdone, Hong Kong's very own Michael Jackson, Michael Chan, also performed for the crowd, with decades of practice put into his act, trying to perfect those legendary moves. Perhaps the most touching tribute came from Michael's boyhood hometown of Gary, Indiana, which held its own celebration of his life and music. With more than 6,000 people attending an upbeat memorial event that featured performers and, of course, the obligatory zombies recreating the thriller video, family friend Reverend Jesse Jackson praised Michael's parents for the job they did in raising their family whilst living in a small two-bedroom house in a working-class neighborhood. Today, we thank and praise God for Michael. We thank God. For the Jackson family, we thank God for a mother and a father that birthed them, bred them, taught them, disciplined them, gave them hope, gave them joy. The Jacksons moved from Gary, southeast of Chicago, after the Jackson Five recorded their first album. As streams of fans flocked to the Jacksons' former home in homage to his late son. Joe Jackson, a former crane operator at U.S. Steel, relished the opportunity to address his former hometown crowd. I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, because it's a pleasure to be back to see so many people here. So you know, it's always good to come back home. You know that. But I've been around the world so many times, and so it does feel good to be back home. Meanwhile, the reverberations of Michael's sudden death were continuing to be felt across the globe, and even well-known stars, work colleagues, and peers of Michael Jackson himself could not believe this larger-than-life figure had left us. My whole life's been influenced by Michael. I mean, I was talking to Michael two weeks ago. I was on the phone with him.、So、we were going to do a collaboration together for the show. So I'm really still kind of in shock, and very saddened, very saddened. So, so many important moments of my life have been inspired by Michael. Many fellow performers simply felt as abandoned as his fans. In the end, Michael was the shining star that even they looked up to in times of professional and personal hardship. Music just pushing, just like making sure every single thing I did, I looked at his stage show as the ultimate. And to me, it's like every move, every hand, just everything, you know. And I kind of want to do that, you know. So to me, it was kind of like, well, who's there to look up to now, you know? So we just have to keep going over the videos. Well, I started off singing and dancing, so Michael Jackson was such a great performer. And someone who always loved performance and dancers. And I started off in New York, and I remember he was having an audition for one of those great, big, epic music videos. And they were just looking for guys, and I went anyway because I was like, I want to be a part of that. He was just something that you wanted to be a part of. He gave us so much music, so many incredible performances, so many incredible videos. 
you know, he's going to be missed. We were all looking forward to his comeback. Michael was not only an inspiration, but it, he was like, the, you know, the biggest guy on the planet. Like, it was like he was like your best friend, you know. Growing up to Mike, it's, it's, it's devastating, but at the same time, I've just been doing my moves. I've been just on like a little celebration tip, you know what I mean? Just to kind of like set him off in a good way, you know? He actually came to see me in the studio, and I rehearsed the whole speech on how I would salute the general. And by the time he got to the studio, I shook his hand. My whole voice box was gone and my hands were trembling. No man in existence has ever done that to me um, besides Michael Jackson. Other stars just wanted to applaud Michael for the time he spent on this earth and the way he spent it. The tragedy is if you lived your life and didn't do what you came to do with it. Brother Michael Jackson, hey, he did a lot with his life. Did he do all of it? That's for him to know, and, and you know, I'm not the one to judge that. But he did a lot. In that lifetime, he did a lot. So there's no tragedy there. Michael was like a, just like a child. Um, it's like a child when you talk to him, you know. He's, you have to kind of prompt the conversation, you know. It's just, just like a child, really innocent. Very beautiful, beautiful person. Meanwhile, other performers were still coming to grips with the sad news of Michael's passing. Just really horribly sad. I mean, all of them are so great, you know, the, up from top to bottom. He was the greatest. Stars from the music world were naturally hit hard by the news, and rappers like 21-year-old Ace Hood and hip-hop artist Nee Yo felt like they had lost a childhood friend. Oh, man, you know, growing up, man, in my household, man, you know, we definitely grew up on Michael Jackson, you know what I mean? I definitely, you know, remember being in the house moonwalking in my socks, you know what I mean? Oh man, I can think back to being eight years old, skating around in the, uh, in the kitchen on my socks, trying to figure out the moonwalk and all that, so yeah. Whilst rapper Fabulous admitted his wardrobe was heavily influenced by the one glove trendsetter. You know, I had it all from the thriller jacket to the to the toy glove that you that you put glue on and put the glitter on the glove. You know, so you know, just losing him was a, was a tremendous lo loss to the world, if not just uh, the music generation as well. Hip hop artists William North Pole and Jeremiah summed it up best by describing the huge hole that Michael had left. As far as Michael Jackson passing away, I feel like you know, being that he was the biggest entertainer in the world, I really, really ever. I really feel like 50% of music is gone. So, I mean, you know, he's drawing up from Jackson 5 until now, definitely. Still, you know, heavily influenced. He'll never be forgotten. He's never going to, you know, his music never dies. And those entertainers who had been around longer in the industry also paid heartfelt tributes to a man who knew how to give as a performer. He's the greatest entertainer of all time. Bottom line, there's no one who could compare to him. There's no one who's had, you know, um, over 40 years of, of, of music in them, from a child on up to being 50 year old um, and about to go on a world tour, to play 50 dates in, in one city alone and sell them out in a day, basically. Uh, Michael was like the muse of any musician. You know, he inspired you and he made you feel anything that you wanted to, to be, you could be that in the industry. Well, they said Sammy Davis was the best entertainer ever. Uh, I put Michael right up there with him. Michael worked hard. You could see it when he hit the stage. When I heard it, I felt pain. He's going to be remembered because he was uh, an incredible artist. You know, he's one of the best that ever did it. And he was an innovator. Michael, um, uh, he, uh, how can I say this? Michael reestablished how you deliver a song. Never before had anyone sang and danced like Michael Jackson. So he actually reinvented that. The members of supergroup Destiny's Child had very personal memories of the Michael they knew. He loved huge, huge shoes to fill. Oh my goodness, there are some great performers out here today. I don't know, um, gosh, I'm sure it can be done. You know, but when you think of how hard Michael Jackson worked, it's like, you know, it's that breed out there of hard workers to, to get to where he is. He was, is, he still is here. Kelly Rowland remembered when the chart-topping girl group came face-to-face -face with their idol for the first time.
the first time I met Michael Jackson, it was with Destiny's Child. And he actually sang Bootylicious to us. And oh, wow. my mouth was wide Ooh. open. And I couldn't say anything <laughs> because he just, he takes you back. Michael's presence is so sweet. Like, it, it really is. And when he sang it, he just sang it just because he loves the record. And we were like, you inspire everything we do, <laughs> you know? And just to this day, like, wow. I know, I see, like, um, just so much of him in so many different artists. He inspires so many. Michelle Williams still remembers performing for Michael and agrees that getting the nod of approval from him was a career-defining moment. Oh, he was just fantastic, and performing for him at Madison Square Garden for his 30th anniversary, he gave us the thumbs up. And like I said in another interview, I said, I can go on with my career now. He gave me the thumbs up. <laughs> just an awesome, awesome, awesome soul. But outside of his immediate family, no one knew more about Michael Jackson and his musical legacy than the founder of Motown himself, Barry Gordy. He was the one who brought the Jackson 5 to Motown back in 1968. Barry had had the pleasure of knowing Michael since he was 10 years old. I am somewhat numb. I am shocked uh, at the passing of Michael Jackson. You know, it's uh, like a dream, a bad dream. He was so much like a son to me. Uh, it's just hard to realize that Michael Jackson is not here. But signing the Jackson 5 was much more than a business deal. Barry took the whole family under his wing and did his best to help ensure that the kids took time out from their singing and performing schedules to simply play around and be kids. There's a picture back there where we played uh, uh, baseball every week when Michael was a kid. In fact, that's a kid. That's a, he was a catcher, and my son was the pitcher. And uh, they're back there uh, doing it together. And uh, he just sort of grew up under the Motown banner. And uh, while most people, people think that he had no fun in his childhood, he did a lot that brought joy to him. Although he had initially been reluctant to sign the Jackson 5, after having a difficult time with one-time child star Stevie Wonder, he could sense something special in Michael, the combination of an extraordinary talent and sheer determination. He always wanted to be the best and was willing to work as hard as it took to be that. And we could all see, you know, that he was a winner at that age. And uh, I've always believed winners are winners long before they win and uh, picking them out before they win was very easy with uh, Michael Jackson. And from the music legend who had crafted the careers of some of the greatest popular artists of the 20th century, it doesn't get any more simple than this. Michael was and will, he will remain one of the greatest entertainment, entertainers that ever lived. One of the greatest entertainers that, that ever, ever lived. Another close friend who had been right by Michael's side throughout many years was producer extraordinaire Quincy Jones. For Quincy, the blow of losing such an influential musical legend was devastating. It's still uh, surrealist to me. It's very surrealistic. I can't, I can't, I can't get my arms around it. No. It's not real. What does it mean to you personally? I was 50, I was his age when I produced Thriller. You know, and it's just not real. And I was here when he sold out the concert, 50 again, in four hours. Remember that? It's the last time I spoke to him. And because Quincy and Michael spent many hours slaving over the creation of his musical masterpiece, Thriller, not to mention the hours spent simply talking about life and the future, the trusting bond between them was lovingly enduring. The realization he would never see Michael again hit home hard. It is, it's like my big brother, it's part of my soul goes with it, you know, it's, it does. It's a, it's a very close relationship, and that's what it was. However, Quincy was determined to remember the good times, in particular the time he spent producing Michael's landmark album, Thriller, 
which went on to sell 104 million copies worldwide. And if anyone knows the value and timeless quality of Michael's music, it's Mr. Quincy Jones. And to this day, every city I go to in the world, Shanghai, Shenzhen, wherever, Rio, Cairo, at that magic hour, they, uh, I hear those records, we don't stop to get enough from 30 years ago, and it blows my mind, <laughs> it really does. But it's just, it's all the songs and Michael's talent and the production and everything else. Another business associate and friend of Michael's who stayed by his side for many years was his former publicist, Susan Blonde. She remembers his gentle and generous nature, particularly when talking to fans. Taught by his father to respect his fans, Michael was one star who always knew which side his bread was buttered. He was well aware that if it weren't for his loyal followers, there would be no Michael Jackson. Oh, years we could hang out and we could go to things together like see the whiz and see on broadway he liked stephanie mills and the whiz and uh you know watch the kids come up to him and all want the autographs and i would say why don't you just sign you know mj instead of michael jackson just the way andy warhol always signs everything at aw he says oh no i could never do that these are my fans these people make me and he was, he was so darling and sincere and sweet in those years but above all else, what truly made this unique man even more one of a kind was his ability to give, and not just in the performance sense. Ever since he started making decent money from album sales and concerts, Michael always felt strongly about giving to those in need. Founded in 1992, Michael's Heal the World Foundation undertook programs to bring underprivileged children to his ranch to enjoy the theme park rides and give them a sense of hope and happiness. On a larger scale, the foundation also sent millions of dollars around the globe to help children threatened by war, poverty, and disease. He knew that the key to helping more people break free from the shackles of poverty was to give more. That was why he decided to donate the entire profits of his dangerous world tour to the Heal the World Foundation. After performing to 3.5 million people over the course of 67 concerts, he'd raised over $100 million in relief. He worked tirelessly behind the scenes with charities throughout the world and fought hard to shine the light on the victims of poverty. This was particularly apparent in 1995 when he ventured to Pelerino in Brazil to film his video for They Don't Really Care About Us. Although officials tried to ban the production team from filming in the shantytown for fear images of the poor might affect tourism, Michael went head-to-head -head with bureaucratic officials in order to show the world how some people were forced to live. A gente fica muito triste porque ele veio aqui na comunidade, quer dizer, escolheu dentro de cenários maravilhosos, Copacabana, não sei o que, não. Ele resolveu vir, vir dentro da comunidade, do lado da gente, dos moradores aqui, assim, no maior recepção. Another area of interest to Michael was the poverty situation in Africa. Joining African leaders in calling for debt relief, he knew that images of him in Namibia would help bring attention to the plight of thousands of people living in dire conditions in African slums. There must be a global resolve that the 21st century will bring about caring and protection of our children and above all, universal love. And as usual, he wanted no stone left unturned and knew exactly what had to be done. My new business partner, Mr. Don Barden, and myself are going to put our money where our mouths are. And we will be looking at global investments that will bring economic empowerment to people that will ultimately benefit and enrich the lives of children. 
We are all touched by the atrocities committed against children, sexual and physical abuse, child slave labor, forced homelessness, educational neglect. We feel ashamed, angry, appalled. But there is no action, no action. Another issue close to Michael Jackson's heart was HIV AIDS. Long before it became popular as a cause, he helped draw public attention to the disease, particularly with a high profile case involving a young boy called Ryan White, who had contracted the virus through a contaminated blood treatment. With HIV AIDS still largely controversial at the time, Michael went out on a limb and publicly pleaded with the Clinton administration to give more money to HIV AIDS charities and research. Since Michael's death, his sister Latoya is continuing the tradition by volunteering in her brother's name. To come here and do something for LA and to work and do something that my brother was involved in makes me feel really great because I feel the love. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a sense of, wow, this is great. This is what he would want it. So I'm doing it. I can fill that dream, that wish. And Latoya felt nothing but pride to be carrying on the work started by her baby brother all those years ago. The reason why I'm here is to help others. I think it's so important, we as Americans, to help those who need this help. And that's what my brother did. He loved to help. He loved to give. He's been giving, actually, to this organization over 10 years. So I felt, why not continue this, especially in L.A., South L.A., when they were telling me that they really don't have much resources here. They need more and more and more. So I figured... Why not start here? So what would Michael have thought about her honoring his memory in this special way? Love it. He would absolutely love it because this is something that comes from his heart. And when you give to others, things come back in a wonderful way. And I'm hoping that everybody else, Americans, can give to them as well. On the subject of siblings, Michael's older brother, Jermaine, has also been stepping into Michael's shoes. A few months after Michael's death at the Save the World Awards ceremony in Austria, Jermaine collected the main honor on behalf of his late brother. The awards recognized Michael for his social engagement and participation in humanitarian campaigns to bring attention to poverty, environmental degradation, and the rights of children. It's a wonderful feeling, and I said for many times this is very much of what Michael's message was all about, healing the world, making the world a better place to live. Jermaine took the opportunity to reveal the extent of his brother's generosity, lending his support to causes that not even his closest friends knew about. But then again, what's Michael Jackson without a few surprises? There is so much work on the humanitarian side, and from just sending aid to victims in Bosnia and different parts of the world, flood victims, uh, children who are dying of cancer, uh, uh, anti-poaching of animals all through Africa, um, um, uh, stopping the chopping of trees, and, and to, I mean, anything he could get involved with, because this is how he was raised, this is how we were raised. It is not the material things, but what you do with the success once you achieve it. And he was able to reach out to people and to governments and to try to make a change. So that's what Michael is. He's a wonderful entertainer, but he's a greater humanitarian. And in the name of his brother, Jermaine continued to encourage people to get busy and start helping others. And the upbringing that we have, the right morals and principles, Achieve the success, but that's not the most important. It's what you do with it, what you do with it to help others, and that's why we're here. Thank you very much. And as the driving force behind the family's success, Joe Jackson echoed the sentiments of his children and applauded Michael's unwavering, generous nature and heartfelt dedication to philanthropy. He tried his hard to please everybody, the sick. He, he donated so much money to the sick. He helped the blind. He helped everybody that needed help and he was glad to do it i've seen michael help so many people and sometimes he would go and cry about it because he felt sorry for the people that he was helping with michael's siblings proudly taking on board many of his humanitarian causes 
the name Michael Jackson is assured to live forever in more ways than one. As 20,000 fans and friends gathered inside the Staples Center in Los Angeles to pay their last respects to their hero, it was hard to comprehend that on the very same stage that now held his coffin, the King of Pop had danced and sang just two weeks earlier. Seen as a way for his friends, family, and fans worldwide to grieve and show their support, the memorial concert was beamed to millions around the world who remembered Michael for his immense talent and unsurpassed generosity of spirit. I thought it was amazing. Um, very, very emotional. I didn't realize how close I felt to Michael and his music until I was in there today. His music is going to be his legacy. I don't think anyone's doubting that. And there were some amazing performances. I mean, Stevie Wonder, Johnny Pants, and like everyone big up there was there. And I think that says a lot about him and him as a person. And it was a very moving service. It was really, really well done. I tell you, it doesn't take a lot to make a grown man cry. And it was, uh, I was crying the whole time. I've been a fan since I was a little boy. And it was extremely touching for me. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm, Speechless, I really am. I cried when Brooke Schultz was up there because, you know, she was very curious. I cried when the, uh, her daughter, his daughter spoke because, you know, it, it was very emotional. It was way more than I expected. The outpouring um, from the dignitaries and celebrities was just truly, truly unbelievable. Uh, very sad. I mean, a day I'll never, ever forget. But it was Michael's 11-year-old daughter, Paris, who stunned the world with an emotional statement, calling her daddy the best father I could imagine. Through tears, she went on to say, I love him so much. And for many people, that emotional moment brought home the realization that Michael Jackson will not only be remembered for his inimitable voice, his revolutionary dance style, and his unwavering commitment to humanitarianism, he will also be treasured as a devoted father. His kids were the most important thing, and that his the protection of them, he's shielding them from the press, um, so that by covering their identities, that they could go out and have a life, you know, with other people. The beloved children he'd done his utmost to shield from the prying eyes of the press would for now be entrusted to the care of Michael's mother, Catherine, and left to grieve in private with those who knew their father best. Just remember Michael as being one of the kindest, most generous, caring people I've ever met in my life.